Okay guys, so I wanna go ahead and take a quick tour around the new UAS that I just finished building for work. Uh, as you can see, it is now complete, minus graphics, of course. We still have uh, some NMSU uh, logos that need to go on the wing. Uh, N number or registration number needs to be placed on the aircraft as well. Not sure where I'm putting that yet, maybe on the booms. Uh, also need to put the safety prop arc uh, on either side. Haven't gotten to that yet. But in the meantime, uh, just do a quick tour of the aircraft. So this is a Danson wing uh shadow rq7 shadow it, i'll be honest with you i won't buy a kit like this from them again it is not the greatest of kits uh, all the balsa wood and all of the plywood extremely soft uh, there's no hardwood pieces for the spar they used uh, some other name wood that's fairly hard but not like hard bass wood or anything like that for a spar which i was kind of surprised at uh, the assembly of the aircraft was pretty straightforward. Would have been nice if they had plans instead of just giving you some pictures and saying, here you go, step one, step two. Uh, but for someone that has built model airplanes for quite some time, uh, not an issue at all. Um, you know, it went, went together fairly well for, for, you know, for what it is and, uh, and my experience levels. Uh, this is not one of my better airplanes I've built, of course. Uh, you guys have seen some of my other aircraft that I've built and, you know, for instance, over here and, you know, these guys over here. This was definitely not one of my better uh, aircrafts. Uh, however, uh, still, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, now, this aircraft was designed originally for electric power, uh, but because we wanted to be able to still carry some weight and payload stuff, uh, for uh, some works, uh, you know, I, I went with gas. Also gives us much better endurance. I ran the engine with a, uh, I think it's a 12.6 on there right now, three blade, um, mid throttle for about an hour and it barely used not even a quarter tank of the fuel tank that I have in there. And I believe that's a 16 ounce in there. Uh, so more than enough fuel uh, for maybe a, a three hour flight which should be great for what we're gonna use them for. Um, pay no attention to my DIY 900 dipole here. It is a dipole that I made, hand, homemade, uh, measured the lengths and uh, set it up. Works very, very well. It's a little whip antenna now, but that's okay. Uh, so we do have the ignition uh, indicator on here. Uh, it is covered in the uh, new cover uh, from Value Hobby. I uh, got to use my CNC router quite a bit on this trip on this uh, project, so I'm pretty happy with that. I got to learn some of that. Also made a lot of 3D printed parts. Uh, so we're going to start off here in the nose for the 3D printed parts. Uh, this piece right here that is right on the nose, uh, you have the pitot tube, and then this piece here uh, was actually something I found on Thingiverse uh, for a pitot tube going in the nose of the. Uh, of a different aircraft, but it fit beautifully here. I used uh, some micro balloons and some epoxy, and we epoxied that 3D printed part to the nose with the hole and uh, blended it in by sanding it. It looks really nice and uh, allows the pitot tube to be right out in the front, and uh, that should work out really nice. Uh, fiberglass nose ferron comes with the kit. Works out really nice. I know it's a little bit high, uh, I kind of did that on purpose. Uh, also made a 3D printed part down here and also inside uh, where this is all, because I was missing some of the um, wheel collets for this. Uh, and uh, so I made some 3D printed parts to do that. Worked out very well. Uh, made some spacers for the wheels as well. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe you'll see it on this one. 3D printed spacer, uh, just to keep the wheels uh, from rubbing on the uh, tall gear there. Uh, lots of 3D printed parts down here. So we have a couple of mounts where these tubes are gonna slide into and that'll be our uh, payload rails. So we can mount the payloads. One of the main payloads that we're gonna be operating with is gonna be uh, these boxes here. Uh, these are CubeSats, uh, 1U CubeSats. Uh, and the students are gonna be making some uh, sensors that go inside and uh, hopefully I can carry uh, three of these underneath. Uh, they will be open like this, so 
maybe they should not hopefully affect my uh, uh, airflow very much, but we'll see. I know it's gonna affect it some, uh, but hopefully it should be fine uh, for the flight. We have the big hatch up on the top, which is great. Um, engine is a 9cc NGH from uh, Valley View RC, uh, running a three blade. Right now it's a 12 inch. I need to go down to the 11 uh, so I can uh, break in the engine a little bit better. Uh, right now we're just kind of letting it idle, haven't gone to full throttle or anything. Uh, don't want to overheat it. Uh, do have to do some adjustments to the uh, high end. Low end seems great, uh, but the high end is not is slightly off. Um, we'll go ahead, move over to the tail here. Tail, 3D printed tail uh, mounts. Uh, the original ones just had little tiny 3D printed parts right here and here. Uh, not really a lot of support. So I made some new ones. And while I was doing that, I made, uh, use these uh, MT30 connectors uh, to uh, get my elevator or rudder vaders uh, set up so we can just plug them in. Uh, easy unplug, two bolts, and the tail comes off. Did that on both sides, as you can see. One over here as well. These are tricky to get lined up, but they're lined up nicely. Uh, again, not one of my better of uh, covering jobs, but uh, it'll do the job. Um, I did also make a custom air intake because of a rear mounted engine. Uh, inverted. I wanted to make sure we get enough airflow. So during flight, there's a big scoop up here and then it gets tinier at this end. So it should accelerate the air over the cylinder, keeping that engine cool during, uh, during flight ops. So that's the outside of the aircraft, guys. We're going to go ahead and pull the hatch and we'll take a look at the inside. Okay, so pulling the hatch off, guys. I uh, did use some easy clips there, uh, just drilled some holes into the rear firewall and uh, some uh, dowel pins go in on this end. Holds that hatch down nicely. Now inside the aircraft you'll see we have quite a bit of stuff going on here. So we have the cube orange, uh, none of these wires are touching the cube. And we also found these uh, uh, shock mount uh, which does dampen the autopilot quite a bit. Uh, it's actually really nice with the engine running, uh, looking at the vibrations uh, in the aircraft uh, during the flight or during the uh, run-ups and everything. And there was barely any vibration in the uh, autopilot. No worse than a multi-copter basically, guys. So works out really, really nice. Uh, 3D print uh, that part. You can download it on Thingiverse. So if you're interested, just look for a PixHawk 2 uh, shock mount. Works really nice. Uh, all the wires are connected through the back. Uh, they are touching the tank, but uh, again, not much vibration getting in there. Uh, airspeed sensor is here, tubes routed down, around, and up to the nose. Uh, we do have an I2C connector, which is what the, uh, the uh, airspeed sensor is connected to. We're using the old version of the 3DR uh, GPS compass combo, uh, using the cable that comes with the, uh, the system here. Uh, so that's already marked out for it. I know the safety switch is eh, not really helpful, but uh, we do have the safety switch here. Uh, six volt regulator and the battery monitoring system. So the batteries, we have two uh, batteries in here. I'm not sure if, how well you'll be able to see in there, but there's a 3D printed tray that slides out. We have two two cell lithium polymer battery packs. Uh, they are running in parallel and then we plug them in to this end here on the XT30, and that XT30 then goes to the power module. One wire comes out to the six volt regulator. The other one goes out to the ignition system. So we do have the uh, uh, kill switch on the ignition through the autopilot and through the RC controller through a pass-through. I did swap out the Allen heads to these knurled uh, uh, M3 screws uh, much easier to assemble the aircraft with only one tool now and you don't have to try to reach in there um, one of the other things that i did print out here is this uh, join-in tube so that the wing tube is uh, nicely seated uh, between these uh, the carbon fiber nubs on both sides here these tubes actually are leading edge spars they go about to here 
Uh, I did add another uh, trailing edge spar solid carbon tube all the way to here as well um, since it is supporting the tail. Uh, 3D printed a plate here to put my fuel. Uh, that's my fuel in gauge. The uh, fuel tank is here and we are not using a clunk uh, because this is not an aerobatic airplane guys. I just went ahead and this, uh, this inlet here is really the fill. Uh, but we're using that as our uh, feed to the engine. So that has a, a, a tube that goes down to the uh, bottom of the tank. And it's about, uh, maybe about, I uh, want to say about an eighth of an inch away from the bottom of the tank. Uh, so that's our unusable is that little bit. I'm okay with that because after running this for an hour and it didn't even go down a quarter tank, I think we'll be fine. Uh, for most of the missions that we have for this aircraft. Um, fuel filler right here just pops out. Um, so while the hatch is off, you can pull that out, fuel it up, put it back away. And then the hatch goes right back on top. We do have the ignition over here, 3D printed the clip to hold the uh, ignition in place. 3D printed a uh, engine or a throttle servo mount there. And uh, that works very nicely, short linkage right to the engine. So uh, that's the inside, guys. Uh, I don't have any video or anything else on this aircraft, on the aircraft right now. I don't plan on putting anything on it for the time being. Uh, maybe down the road, if the mission changes for the aircraft, maybe we'll look at it because I did put hatches uh, underneath the wings on both sides on the inboard. So we can always put and add a uh, 5.8 uh, video transmitter on the aircraft if needed. Uh, also thought about maybe running wires out to the tube and putting the camera right up there in the V-tail, looking down over the front of the aircraft. That way, uh, since I don't have the RPM or the fuel flow working yet, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, that'll give us the, is the engine running? Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's working out pretty good. Pretty happy with it. So uh, as of right now, this is where it stands, guys. We ran the engine, engine runs good. I'm waiting on an 11-inch prop, still three-blade master air screw. Uh, we'll go ahead and run those, uh, run that on there for a little while, just until we break in the engine uh, in flight, uh, which should be in a couple of weeks uh, when I get back from uh, Alaska, basically. Oh, and uh, we did buy some of these uh, little lights here. Uh, we'll put these on if we need to, uh, so we can fly at night. Uh, underneath our certificate of authorization. So we got wingtip lights and a, a strobe down underneath. So that's the uh, dancing wing shadow guys. And uh, maybe we'll have the maiden flight and I'll be able to post this on Facebook as well. So other than that guys, that's where we are. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, tuning in really quick. And uh, we'll get back on the cricket when I get back from Alaska. We're gonna redo that wiring behind the uh, panel get that all straightened up now that this is done um, and uh, I do have a lot more trips coming up uh, but uh, guys you know I'm doing the best I can with uh, work and uh, getting this all done and uh, so that's the plan I leave on Sunday this week so a um, couple more weeks and maybe we'll get this thing flying so other than that guys that's where I'm at uh, appreciate you guys tuning in catch you guys on the next video bye now